There's a lot of cool new things in 1.7 for their vision. There's accommodations, there's global events, there's new vanity items, mass, there's new things to do in general. But I always keep coming back to survival. This video, I wanted to give some tips for maybe some beginners that are first coming to their vision. There's a free weekend of survival going on right now at the recording of this video. So I thought it would probably be a good a time as any to go over some of the things that I do in survival to get to the end, get that extraction, fight the hunter, and get that sweet loot to maximize my build. Hey everyone, it's Matt here, aka Tech Ranger, and today I want to talk about survival because I love this mode. It incorporates so many things that I like from video games as kind of like a similar layer of like the looting from something like PUBG or H1Z1, but it combines it with that division flair. You can do it in PvP, you can do it in PvE. Obviously, PvP, you're gonna want to play a little bit more passive, but I think these tips overall will help you whichever mode you play because you don't want to die like this. Before we get started, I do want to say this is by no means a definitive guide to play survival because I know everybody plays a little bit different, but this run is something that I did earlier in the night and I had some success with it. I had some failures, so I'm going to go over those in the video and just kind of what I look out for and that sort of thing. So let's jump into it. So survival is totally separate from the main game of the division. So you're going to start off randomly in one of the corners of the main map. You have nothing and spawn in and you'll be in a room. In that room you'll see a fabric container which is like that little yellow container. There's going to be a crafting bench. There's also going to be a medicine bag which will either, well most likely carry painkillers at the start of the match. But once you get out in the map there's going to be those medicine bags and you're going to want to grab those because you have an infection and that infection is just going to keep ticking down until zero until you die so when you first start out just grab everything in that room don't craft anything just grab the fabric and go you can use it later you use fabric to make clothes but the only clothes that you can make with one green fabric isn't really much so you might as well just play your way and try to get in your fire barrels to get warm until you get to where you need to go so 24 players are playing survival so 23 other players are playing with you there's these chopper crashes around they're probably gonna run to the chopper crash first if, but the chopper crash is really don't have a lot of materials as opposed to like a parking garage or some of these other buildings that are kind of on the map so I would suggest getting away from the players and just go to the outskirts go find random building find parking garage get some of those extra materials then you'll be better prepped to take on a landmark it will yield you even more loot it's harder to take out but there's a ton of loot as compared to the chopper crash so i would suggest doing that as i spawned in at the top left of the map this is the am track landmark and there's quite a bit of enemies around here including an lmg guy but if you play a little smart get distance from that guy use the visibility to your advantage and uh, just put as much distance between you and him as possible. You should have no problem taking that guy out, even if you just have a pistol and didn't find a weapon like I did. Probably eight times out of 10, I probably find enough loot in this landmark to last me until the next safe house. And the closer you get to the DZ, better the loot's gonna be. So you're gonna always wanna be working towards the DZ. And the more hideouts you go past, the closer the ones are to the DZ different things will become available to get crafted. An important tip for me here is to not freak out when you don't find things. You're gonna find it, just keep moving. That's the important thing. Don't stay in one spot for too long. Pop that water so you can find materials more easily or soda. Once you're looted up, you're gonna wanna find your next destination. And here I actually marked a few dead bodies that I saw on the map. Uh, they're gonna be marked by axes. Sometimes that's good because you might be able to find stuff that they drop because if you die in survival, you drop everything so they may have dropped something but the kind of risk is that you don't really know if that stuff is still there so you can make your way there but i would totally hit a safe house try to craft some things at first you're gonna want to craft well really just one thing you just need a basic virus filter to get in the dz and once you craft that you can get in the dark zone odds are you're probably gonna have extra materials at this point even if it's early on i went to a safe house that was actually one of the starting safe houses so there wasn't a ton of stuff to craft but if you can craft anything clothing just do it because it's just extra for you mods are pretty great because they improve your weapons but in survival it's even better because it just puts you at that 
that much more of an advantage over NPCs, not to mention if you're playing PvP and you're playing against actual players. Also, hopefully at this point you got some electronics and was able to actually craft a skill. I suggest getting the Pulse skill because Pulse will give you another advantage over NPCs and players because you'll be able to see them in the low visibility. And then you can also use the low visibility, like I said before, to your advantage even more so now and see where the enemies are positioning themselves around you so that you can get around them so you can win pretty much any gunfight if you play smart. You'll want to engage in every gunfight because you never know what the NPCs are going to drop. You could get a purple piece of gear with awesome stats super early in the game before you even get to the DZ and you're in really good shape. Like in this run in particular, and that chance will only increase the closer you get to the DZ. Just know that the enemies will also go up in difficulty. So you're going to see more purple bar enemies. You're going to see more yellow bar enemies. With that said, along the way, if you happen to run across a landmark, go for it. If you happen to run across a crash site go for it if you're running low on meds and just happen not to find any because you know rng i would keep the kind of extracurricular activities to a minimum and now since you already have a basic virus filter just try to get close to the dz it's going to be a little hard to get in because there are mobs that roam around the entrances but you'll be able to get in because you have that pulse and you can see where the enemies are and try to avoid them in order to get into the DZ. The faster you can get in the DZ, the better, the more points you're gonna get as a bonus at the end, and the more points you get, the more caches you get at the end just from completing a survival. With these tips, the DZ really isn't that bad. Once you get in, the first thing you're going to want to do is set a location for your antivirals, which you need to get. Well, you don't really need to get them, but you can get them for some extra points to go towards those caches at the end of the match. You're going to want to be finding Division Tech, which you'll know if you've been in the DZ in the main game. Division Tech is going to allow you to craft high-end weapons, a flare gun, so you can actually call in an extraction. And you're also going to be able to use that Division Tech to convert that to other materials or high-end materials that you might need and with that just try to apply some of the same tips to your time in the DZ just try to clear some landmarks each landmark is gonna have a boss as you can see here and they're gonna actually drop a survival cache which you want to pick up survival caches have like four items plus maybe a bonus item so once you can start crafting high-end weapons that's when you have the weapons that are going to be taking out the hunters easily. If you don't, you're going to have a little bit harder time to take out hunters, but it's not impossible. I've seen it done. You can further maximize your time and get more powerful by clearing more landmarks, fighting more enemies. What I try to do is I try to keep an eye out if somebody calls in an extraction because you can actually go to their extraction. You can actually mess with them and spawn in a hunter. Me, I actually decided to help them kill the hunter. I had a ranged weapon, so I was easily able to take out these hunters you spawn in one hunter for each person that's there so if you're playing in a team of four you're gonna spawn in four hunters so you better be ready for that this was actually the only hunter encounter i've had which you'll see later in the video when you're fighting a hunter the important thing to note is to not get too close because he will melee you and kill you in one hit and you do not want that to happen because you cannot revive yourself from that but just play smart play to your weapon but just do it at a distance don't get close to him you're gonna want to be thinking two steps ahead of him you don't have a low visibility here, so you can't exactly, you know, outmaneuver them that way. And hunters do have, like, a player AI to them, so they are pretty smart. So you're going to have to think maybe one, two steps ahead of them. But if you have grenades and you have a high-end weapon, that should be no problem for you. So when the hunter's gone, then he's gone. He's not going to spawn back. I mean, unless somebody else hijacks your extraction, sometimes in PvP, people will wait for you to call in an extraction so that they can go and hijack it, you know, kill you, then kill the hunters, and then they get all your loot. So I hope this video helped some of you that have had some trouble with survival or maybe can't necessarily extract, just have some trouble getting into the dark zone and that sort of thing. Let me know if it did help and if you guys have any other things that you do that you find helpful during survival definitely put them in the comments down below i'd love to hear them because i know everybody plays a little bit different and with that said i will catch you guys in the next video thank you very much for watching and have a great day